I love golf, but if I were in the White House, I don't think I'd ever see Turnberry again. I don't think I'd ever see Doral again. I own Doral in Miami. I don't think I'd ever see many of the places that I have. There won't be time to go on vacations. There won't be time to go golfing all the time. I'm not going to play much golf because there's a lot of work to be done. You need leadership. Yeah. You know, you can't fly to Hawaii to play golf. I don't know where the president was. He wasn't very far away. Maybe he was playing golf. Obama, it was reported today, played 250 rounds of golf. Obama went golfing every day. Let Obama go play golf every day. Obama plays more golf than professional players on the PGA Tour. He's played a lot of golf. He's played more than most PGA Touring professionals play. More than a guy who plays on the PGA Tour plays. PGA Tour. Plays more golf. Plays more golf. PGA Tour. PGA Tour. I mean, this guy. Golf, 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 golf. More, more. Greetings from 2020. The coronavirus has engulfed the world and Donald Trump has once again broken the record of how many times he has played golf as the US president. He made a promise to the American people that he won't play the sport at all after he gets to the White House. A promise that he has spectacularly failed to keep even during a pandemic. Clearly, he just loves golfing. So on a sunny Saturday morning, Donald Trump headed towards his own golf club in Sterling, Virginia. Television cameras accompanied the presidential motorcade on its way to the Trump National Golf Club. After all, it was going to be his first time at a golf course in three months. A few moments later, the US president emerged wearing a white cap and a white polo shirt. Accompanying him on the golf course were some White House officials. All of them had to take a break after saving so many lives in the US. So they decided to relax a little and not wear a mask. A couple of hours at the golf course and Trump realized that the cameras were still there. So he decided to weigh with them and head back to the White House. He departed the venue a few minutes later. As he drove down the road, a few demonstrators gathered with placards. Perhaps a sign of love. That's what he called protests in the past. A sign of love. Not this time though. He saw no love on these placards. As soon as he reached the White House, he took action. By doing what? Tweeting. There was a barrage of tweet missiles. Tweets about the fake and totally corrupt news, which made his outing sound like a mortal sin. His words. He does have a flair for drama. Tweets about why the same media does not talk about all of the time Obama spent on the golf course. Again, his words. He gets to play, why not me? And tweets about how he has shattered 100% of the ISIS caliphate. Totally unrelated, but that's Donald Trump for you. Donald Trump says he deserves credit for doing so because he was, quote unquote, left a mess. No word about the glorious mess his own inaction has led to. The United States still leads the world with more than 1.6 million cases of the Wuhan virus. The death toll is close to the 100,000 mark, 100,000. It currently stands at 98,223. Is this a good time to play golf? We don't think so. And it wasn't a good day to play golf either. The United States was commemorating Memorial Day, its most somber national holiday. A day meant to pay tributes to martyred American soldiers, not to head out for golf, not if you're president at least. By the way, this was his second golf trip during this pandemic. As per some reports, his 266th 266, 266th golf trip as the President of the United States. Do you know how much the White House has spent on these outings? $130 million. These are American media reports. $130 million. Between golfing and tweeting, he declares himself a wartime president. American citizens are collateral damage, clearly. First, paying with tax dollars and now with their lives.